What is up everybody? Welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to play the old school Java games on your Android device and any other Android handheld. In my case I'm going to be using my Retro Pocket 5 but any Android device will be able to run this as well. So let's get started. <laughs> Before we begin, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to my channel, it really helps me grow so I can keep on bringing content for you guys like this. So the first thing you want to do is navigate to the Google Play Store and in here you're going to search for J2ME and it's going to be the first app, J2ME Loader. The app is free and it's also ad free which is really great. You're going to download this and install it on your device and as you can see I already have it installed right here. Now I'm going to open this and I already have a few games installed in here but I'm pretty sure on your end it's going to be empty. So what you want to do now is navigate to a browser of your choice. In my case I'm going to be using Opera GX and you're going to navigate to this website and the link is going to be down in the description. Here you're going to be able to get some of these games which is considered abandonware. So let's search for a game. I'm going to search for Fast and Furious and let's get 3D Fast and Furious Tokyo. Here you're going to see different resolutions so I recommend getting the 240 times 320 and once you click on the resolution here you're going to see different jar files you can get. I'm going to get the first one. So click on the jar and here I'm going to rename it to just Fast and Furious Tokyo and I'm going to download it. Now that it's done downloading I'm going to close my browser and I'm going to navigate to my files because I have ESE as my front end and you're able to see these games on the front end as well. I'm going to move this to my J2ME folder for ESE so I can have all my ROMs together so I'm going to move this to my SD card and under my ROMs folder I'm going to find the folder called J2ME and I'm going to move it here. Now you're going to open the J2ME loader and when you press the plus button at the bottom right here you're going to be able to import your ROMs into the J2ME loader and install the games. So for example we just downloaded the Fast and Furious so you have to navigate to the directory where you save that and then you're going to open the game and it's going to install the game. I'm going to click on close so when you open the Fast and Furious Tokyo the first thing you're going to see is this screen giving you aspect ratios, background and a lot of other settings and we're gonna get to that but for now we want to make sure that the game is going to boot up so just press the back button and press on the game again now it's going to launch depending on your device the buttons that you see on the screen are going to look a little bit different because I'm running this on my retro pocket 5 and everything is basically landscape it's going to look like this and one really cool thing is that you can map all these buttons to your gamepad so on my retro pocket 5 or any handheld you can map or if you have an external controller you can also map those as well. I'm gonna press English language and the game is going to just load. So I want to activate the sound but it's possible you guys won't be able to hear anything. Now I want to just do a quick race just to showcase the game. This one's pretty cool because it's in 3D. Not all the games are in 3D. Most of them are actually just in 2D. But now that we have confirmed that our game is working I'm just gonna exit and I'm gonna quit the game. Now remember how I mentioned about mapping the controls? We're going to do that and you can do this per game. So I'm going to use Constantine as an example and just before I boot up this game I'm going to boot up Blood Plus. So for the standard layout you see that it's like a gray background with like blue button colors and whatnot. I personally don't like that it's too bright and I prefer to have like more like darker colors when it comes to this. So for example for Constantine I already changed the layout to look like this. So I feel that this is easier on the eyes and I have also mapped my controls. So this is what we're going to be doing next. Now for Constantine I chose a color similar to the colors of the screen. So I'm going to exit now Constantine. This is just an example so you guys can see how it can be customized so what I'm going to do is you can open any game I'm not necessarily going to open the Fast and Furious that was just for me to showcase to you guys how to install games so I'm going to be opening Silent Hill Mobile and as you can see it has that standard layout we want to customize that each game has their own profile all you need to do is press and hold on the game and you're going to see this little menu in here you're going to click on the settings and here you're going to be able to customize whatever you want so first what I want to do is change the background and I'm going to change my background to black now because Silent Hill games have that usual standard the red color on the logo and whatnot what I want to do is I'm going to change the labels and in here you're going to see a few things like labels buttons labels pressed buttons pressed and the outline I want to change the labels to red so you're going to press where it says label and here you're going to select whatever color you want so here let's do like a little bit of a dark red color and I'm going to press ok now that this color has been created I'm going to select it and I'm going to copy it now for the buttons itself this is basically the background of the button I want this to be black now when you press a button the button is going to get highlighted that's what it means as labels pressed so I don't want my labels to be white and I don't want my labels to be red when pressed I actually want my labels to be completely black so I want to invert the color of the buttons when they're pressed and I want my button once it's pressed I actually want to change it to red so I'm going to paste again the red value that I got also the outline I want to have a red outline so in this case and again I'm going to paste the red color that I created so now that I have configured my color I'm going 
going to navigate back and I'm going to open Silent Hill Mobile. And as you can see, my buttons and my background have changed to the colors that I have selected. If you press any of the buttons, you can see that it's basically inverting the colors. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to go for like a crimson red for Silent Hill because it kind of matches the logo. So we can quit this now. And now we're going to select Silent Hill again, click on settings. And what you want to do now is scroll down until you find input devices. And in here, you're going to see layout and you're going to see like different devices here. We're going to leave it as is, but what I'm going to do is click on key mappings. Now here you're going to have a bunch of different keys and you can map to whichever buttons you want. So the J2ME loader automatically kind of maps your D-pad and your D analog stick to the movement of the character automatically. So you don't have to worry about that. But for example, when you open the game, you're going to see like an L and R button. So this is basically where it says change and continue. If I press L, it's going to basically press the change on the screen and continue on the right button. It's going to just move forward with the game. So I personally like to bind those to my left and right shoulder button. So under key mappings, where it says L, you're going to tap and I'm going to press my L button on my pad. And then on the R button, I'm going to click on it and I'm going to press the right button. And as for the letter F, I'm going to map this to the letter A and as well as the number five, letter A. I'm going to navigate back and launch Silent Hill again. And if I press the buttons on the pad, this is going to change based on the bindings that I just added. And that's how you map the buttons on here. Now, there are a bunch of different other settings you can change and we're going to navigate to some of those but I have found that nothing really needs to be changed other than that and there is one really cool thing is that if you want to show the FPS you can enable that setting and as you can see on the top left corner we can see the FPS counter so it is possible to change the game and the scale among other things and I have never really changed the resolution because I don't think that these games are going to look good if you stretch them out here if you press next to the resolution there's like a little table sort of button and in here you're able to change the resolution to a bunch of different ones i have never tried this before but let's just give it a try let's put 800 by 480 and let's see how this performs on silent hill and as you can see the game doesn't look as good as if you were to like run it at the native resolution which was 240 times 320 so it doesn't look good it kind of breaks the game it looks a bit smaller than what it should have so let's exit the game again and that was just to showcase you guys that you can change the resolution of the game if you want to i think i'm just going to leave it as original resolution which was 240 times 320 i think that is the best resolution you can run this game you are also able to add like a few filters on here and as well as changing the graphic modes and so on i usually just leave this as is i found that the games run pretty well as they are so those are all my configurations for the settings here again you can feel free to play around with them like for example you can also change the button shapes right now the default one is the rounded rectangle but you can change it to oval or just rectangle you're also able to change the opacity and a few other settings that will be just on your preference and like i mentioned in the beginning of the video if you want these games to show up on ESDE, all you need to do is transfer them to the j2me folder under ESDE, and you should be able to see those on the front end here i am on ESDE, and here you can see java micro edition and when you click on here you're going to be able to see the different games like assassin's creed batman begins blood plus constant so those are the games I have installed in J2ME Loader. The only thing that I have noticed is that if you do try to boot up the game, although it does open the loader, it just wants to reinstall the game as you can see. So if anybody knows a way to just boot up the game without having to be reinstalled on here, that would be really greatly appreciated. And like I mentioned, once you map the buttons correctly, you're able to use the D-pad to move the character and also interact with different things. Like in this case for Constantine, when you're punching is five, the button five or the letter F. So by mapping this to my A button, it will just do it automatically. Also for like the menu, settings and whatnot, everything is just mapped to my controller. So make sure to map those correctly. That way you're able to use your actual D-pad that you don't have to be using the touchscreen buttons. That is all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys next time.